Okay, so let's recall the following simple power series. Summing from 0 to infinity, quite simply x to the n. If you expand the terms, you will get 1 plus x plus x squared plus x cubed and so forth. And if you recall, this power series converges only when x lies between, strictly lies between negative 1 and 1, and it does converge to the simple rational function 1 over 1 minus x. So now, as you can see, we have here a power series which is equal to a simple rational function on the open interval from negative 1 to 1. So this may look strange and different than what you consider a usual function, but on this open interval, this is a very familiar function, namely the simple rational function 1 over 1 minus x. So we now want to ask a question. If this power series is a function on this open interval, well, what does it take for a general power series to be a function? So when is a general power series, which of course will look like this, summing from 0 to infinity, cn, the nth coefficient, times x minus x0 to the n, x0 being the center of the series, so when is a general power series a function? Well, we already have our answer. And there's two ways to look at this. You see, this power series converges for values of x strictly between negative 1 and 1, and so when the power series converges, it returns this simple rational function. So a power series is a function for the values of x for which it converges. If you think about it in simpler terms, what is a function? If you think of it as a function of x, well, a function takes a value of x and returns a real number. So suppose we pick a value of x for which the series converges, which means that if we sum these terms from 0 to infinity, if the series converges by assumption, the result will be some real number. This is exactly what a, a function does, right? It takes a value x and it returns some other real number. But of course, this new real number coming from trying to evaluate the power series at a specific value of x will only be a real number, therefore giving us a function, if the power series converges. So this is of course the answer. A power series is a function for values of x where the series converges. So a general power series is a function for values of x for which it converges. So asking when is a general power series of function is simply asking to find the values of x for which the series converges. And so the question is, how are we going to determine whether a power series converges or diverges? For which x values will the series converge, therefore giving us a function, and for which values of x will the power series diverge, therefore giving us nothing. So which test are we going to use to determine the convergence or divergence of a power series? Well, if you think about this, regardless of what the coefficients of the power series may be, 
there will always be a term of the form x minus x0 to the n. So this term raised to the nth power, and because of this, if you recall cases when one should or could use the ratio and or root test, this is exactly one of these cases. If you have a term raised to the nth power, a good idea to figure out convergence or divergence is to use the ratio or the root test. And so for almost all power series, when trying to figure out for which values of x the power series converges, we will use the ratio or the root test, and in doing so, of course, this will be a n, the entire sequence of terms we are summing over. And then you may ask, well, what if you were to look at all values of x on the real line for which the series converges, what might that look like? And the great thing is, it will almost always look like the same thing. So imagine you have a power series, and I ask you to find all values of x for which the series converges. Then you will either, because of the term x minus x0 to the n, You'll either use the ratio or the root test, and you'll almost always have the following situation. What you will find out if you look at this onto the real line, the power series will always converge when x equals its center. And I'll let you think about this. So you will always have convergence at the center of the series, and then as you move away from the center of the series to the right and to the left, you're going to have convergence for a while, but at some critical point, convergence will stop. And how far you can go, also a nice thing, will be perfectly symmetric. You'll be able to go as far to the right as to the left and still have convergence. We'll call this distance R. Suppose we can go up to x0 plus r, and to the left, of course, x0 minus r. So on this open interval, you will find that the series will converge. So the power series will converge on this open interval. Therefore, on this open interval, the series converges, therefore will return a function because for every value of x that you choose inside this interval, if you plug it into the series, it will converge, therefore return some real number, therefore giving you a function on the open interval. Now, we call r the radius of convergence. And it's a very intuitive name because if you think of what this is, what it represents, is how far you can walk away from the center of the series and still have convergence. As I've said before, at the center you will always have convergence, and you can always walk a certain distance in both directions and still have convergence of the power series. So how far you can walk away from the center of the series and still have convergence is the radius of convergence. As I've said, on the open interval, you will have convergence. Let's ignore the endpoints for now. If you move further away from the right and the left endpoint, you will always have divergence. So 
So for values of x that are strictly greater than x0 plus r, the series will diverge, so you will have divergence. And the same goes to the left. For values of x that are strictly smaller than the left-hand point, x0 minus r, you will also have divergence. The only thing that sometimes is a bit more tricky are the endpoints. You have a convergence inside of this open interval from x0 minus r to x0 plus r. Omitting the endpoints outside of the interval, you will have divergence. And at the endpoints, as you will see by working out examples, anything can happen. The series will sometimes converge at the right hand point, sometimes diverge, and the same goes for the left hand point. So the endpoints are always a case by case. And the same goes, of course, for the left hand point. And one additional property is because we will be using the ratio or the root test, not only will we have convergence inside this open interval, we will have absolute convergence. So an even stronger form of convergence because of the ratio or the root test. In the next three videos, we will look in each case as one example of an explicit power series, and the question will be to find all values of x for which a series converges. Therefore, finding all values of x for which the power series is a function. And as we're about to see, we will always be in a similar position, and the endpoints will be a case-by-case. -case. And that's it.